and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Mexico City just like this. I'm sure the Tourist Bureau would be more flattered if you remembered it with your eyes open. The garden, the music, the lovely dinner. Mmm, <sighs> lovely chick. Oh, how can anybody think of money in such a heavenly place? I don't know. Suppose we ask the head waiter. <laughs> Seriously, though, I'd be hocking the family silver to pay for this same meal in New York. Oh, senor. Senor North, my humblest apologies for intruding at your dinner table. Oh, hey, Paco, remember us? We knew you when you were playing Frank Brown, Detective Sergeant, New York's finest. You can save that routine for the touristas. Jerry North, I'm a tourista and I love it. <laughs> it's all part of the service, Jerry. No extra charge. Oh, wait till I tell Bill Wagonell a certain protege of his is cutting it down here in Mexico City as a private investigator. Frankly, Jerry, I wish you could give him a better report on what I've been able to do for you. No luck. Uh... Now, I've talked to everyone in Mexico City who's even on speaking terms with your genius typewriter. It's a dead end, chum. Mr. Arthur Douglas just walked out of his hotel one morning. And no one has seen or heard from him since. You don't suppose he... Somebody could have kidnapped him. With all due respects, Pam, there'd be more chance of that happening in my old precinct in New York. Now, this isn't the first time Douglas has pulled a disappearing act. Once he gets hot on a book, there's no telling what hole he'll crawl in to write it. Unfortunately, this gets a little rugged on his publisher. Well, you know, I have to fly home tonight, so I might as well settle our account with you. Oh, not a thing, Jerry. Our motto is Resultados Garantizados, which translates results guaranteed. I didn't find your Mr. Douglas. Yeah, but you will. I'll uh, give you this check. You can call it a retainer. Thank you. And when you do locate Douglas, crate him and ship him home. Airmail. I'm sorry that you return home empty-handed, my friends. Don't worry, Paco, we're not. <laughs> oh, no. Flight 217 to Miami is flying two sections tonight. One just to carry Pam's shopping loot. <laughs> hey, which reminds me, I'm supposed to confirm these reservations. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, Senor North. Uh, one moment, please. Senor North, your reservations have been validated for flight 217. Uh, this is correct, Senor. At 8 o'clock, Senor. Uh, this is the takeoff time, but you will be at the airport in time to load your baggage. Thank you, Senor. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Never mind the apologies. Can you get me on that plane? Flight 217 to Miami? You are very fortunate, senor. We do have a space open on that flight. Look, congratulate me some other time. Go ahead and write up the ticket and tell me how much it costs. Si, senor. What are you doing here? I thought we... You thought Roy had shot his bolt? There'd be no more arguments, no more angry words? That it'd be just you and that glorified truck driver. It doesn't matter, but Alan owns his trucking firm. It's one of the biggest in New York. Doesn't it matter? I suppose it never occurred to you that at least a portion of Alan's great attraction was that he could set you up in a penthouse in New York. Shall we now join in singing one chorus of Just a Bird in a Gilded Cage? 
Really, you're being pretty corny, Roy. Of course it occurred to me, and may I add, it's a very pleasant prospect. That's what I figured. And it may be corny of me, as you say, but isn't there something just a little degrading about marrying a man for his money? Go ahead. Justify your smug little world where it's so very important to be a failure. Frankie, I've had enough of it. And you, in this conversation. Will you kindly leave now? I'm, I'm meeting Alan at the church in less than an hour. I assume you're abandoning these playthings now? They'll be shipped to me. Oh, then you plan to continue painting? Why not? But of course. You'll be the darling of the society editors. A prominent young matron pursues art career. It's too bad our art course did not include instruction in painting with a martini shaker in one hand. I think I can safely make the switch from tequila. talking anymore, is there? You know all the answers. I suppose I should follow custom and say I hope you're very happy with Ellen. Are you asking me what you should say? What difference does it make what I say? There's one thing you forgot to say. A long time ago. It might have made all the difference. What? That you loved me. Goodbye, Roy. Voyage, darling. And many happy returns of the day. Didn't say I loved you, eh, baby? Is that all it took? What do you want to bet it sounds better coming from a guy with a million bucks? Remember how it was with this baby. Two years. We could communicate. That was our big deal. We talked about everything. Everything. And sometimes we didn't talk because we knew. We knew. We didn't have to confuse what we were feeling with words. Didn't say I loved you. How about that? What do you think that was all about those two years? A high school dance? Bon voyage, darling. Uh, if it's all the same to you, you don't have to drive so fast. I say, you, you don't have to drive so fast. Look out! Hey, uh, can't you slow this thing down? Hey, slow down a little, will you? Never mind, just uh, forget I said anything. Watch the traffic. It's all right, dear. You can open your eyes now. We made it. And no broken bones. Uh, unless you crushed my arm. Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. <laughs> it's all right. You have to hold on to something. Oh. oh, Jerry, why is it every cab driver in Mexico City drives like that? I don't know. Unless it's because they're all frustrated bullfighters. Oh, no, senor. They are not frustrated bullfighters. They are frustrated bulls. Atención, por favor. El vuelo número 201 de la Midway Airlines de Rio de Janeiro y haciendo escalas ahorra aterriza en la puerta 7. Attention, please. The Midway Airlines flight 201 from Rio de Janeiro and intermediate points now arriving at gate 7. Check your
your bag, senor? Don't touch that bag. I mean, I don't need a porter now, thanks. Flight 217 to Miami. That will leave from uh, gate 5 on schedule, sir. 8 o'clock. Uh, about 30 minutes. Si. Uh, yes, sir. Gracias. Could I help you, senor? What? Oh, no. No, nobody can help me. I beg your pardon. What? I was just waiting. I'll, I'll be right back. Will the lady who wants a missing little boy? Please come to the office and found office. Maybe I better go help Jerry. They might not find the mother. No, oh, you're staying right here, young lady. This sort of thing goes on all the time. There will be $52.20 overweight, senor. Oh, what did you do? Buy the Chapultepec monument while you were at it? No, dear. Was it for sale? Oh. Thank you, sir. I, I've never flown before. Can you tell me what part of the plane they put this in? Baggage compartment, senor. In the belly of the plane. Wrong, senor? I, 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 Attention, passengers for Linda Torres to flight 217. There will be a 30-minute delay in the departure of this flight. Yes, sir? Give me the bag. I'll bring it back. Right now, I need it. Oh. What a way to run an airline. A 30-minute delay. The agent just told me we were leaving on schedule. going to find out. <laughs> oh, isn't this exciting, Jerry? Look out there. It would be even more exciting if we were returning with a certain elusive writing gentleman named Douglas under our wing. Oh, you and that Mr. Douglas. Can't you forget him? Look, darling, on principle, I'd love to forget Mr. Douglas. It just happens that his last book for me has been on the bestseller list for over a month. Wasn't that good? Yes, dear, good, but I have to be able to produce Mr. Douglas in the flesh. Critics want to meet him. Uh, deals involving thousands of dollars that he must approve. Well, he's bound to turn up. True, but I want him to turn up while his book is still on the bestseller list. I can't be... There is a telephone call for a Mr. Gerald North. Will we step to the information desk? Well, now, who in the world would... That's easy, Paco Brown. He must have some word on the whereabouts of our friend Douglas. We'll be right back. Oh, excuse me. Let's sit here, Alan. All right. Oh, I thought people stopped that when they were married. You were misinformed. That's when they really start. I hope you don't mind my being too obvious, sweet, but I find I like being a bridegroom. Why should I mind? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I'm afraid you'll get tired of hearing me say I love you. Darling, I have good news for you. I love hearing you say you love me. Yeah, thanks, Paco. I'll break it gently to Pam and meet you right here. Right. Flight 217 to Miami. Here you are, sir.
telephone conversation I've ever heard of. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but the connection was bad. And... Well, was it? Uh, was it Paco? Has he located Mr. Douglas? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm afraid you're not going to like this, but uh, I'm going to have to send you on home alone. But, Jerry! According to Paco, Douglas is holed up in a native village, accessible only to brewers and mountain goats, and it's no place for a woman. Pardon me if I sound skeptical, but this has all the earmarks of an elaborate brush-off, Jerry North. Oh, you're an amazing wife. Do you think for one moment, if I had a choice, I would deliberately run out on you, and of all places, here in Mexico City? Oh, I'm sorry. But you see, I kind of love you, and well, we always do everything together. It's funny, I feel the same way, but you know, it takes a certain amount of money to stay happy. And to get money, I have to work with weird characters like Douglas. Come on, I'll uh, get my bag and stay with you till the plane leaves. Say, hey, I'll uh, have to reclaim my bag. Checked it out on flight 217 to Miami. Hold it, Jose. Oh, that's the one right there, the, the black one. You were just in time. We're loading. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Jerry, I want to get a magazine, darling. Yes, I'll have this one, please. And that one. And uh, that one. Hey, wait a minute. You're just going to New York, you know, not, not around the world. Never mind. I'll save them and you can read them. <laughs> oh, Jerry, there's Paco. Hi, amigo. You got here fast. In Mexico City, a taxi cab ride. It's always fast. And so we've discovered. <laughs> well, Paco, I'm glad you're here. Perhaps now you can convince Jerry that it would be perfectly all right for me to go to that native village with him where you, you've located Mr. Douglas. Now stop throwing your weight around, Mrs. North. You're on that plane bound for Miami in just about four minutes. 217 for Miami. Now loading at gate five. Thank you. Come along, dear. Magic carpet to Miami. A honeymoon that will never end. Thank you. Wait a minute. I just want to see if you had my bag. That's it. Go ahead. Jerry, I don't want to go. Why can't I stay here in Mexico City while you and Paco are, are chasing Mr. Douglas? Because I'd rather have you waiting in New York where you know some people. But, Jerry... Look, darling, they're loading your bags on the plane. Now, you'd better get with it or you'll be left here in Mexico City without even a change of lipstick. Come on. Goodbye, Paco. Have a nice trip, ma'am. cold here in Mexico City. <laughs> Come on, I'll buy you one for the road. Why did you have to? Oh, don't spoil it, Roy. You couldn't have done a nicer thing. What do you mean? Well, coming here to see me off. I I thought you hated me, and, and after what I said to you, perhaps you should. But just coming here proves what a big guy you really are. I'm, I'm truly sorry if I hurt you this afternoon, Roy. But now that I've seen you here, you'll always be in my life in a, a certain nice way. Goodbye, Roy.
got to listen to me. I'm no crackpot, but I'm going to be a murderer in another five minutes if you don't listen to me. I'm telling you, there's a bomb in that suitcase. Hold flight 217. Flight 217 has cleared the field. Bring it back. There's a time bomb aboard in a black suitcase. Baggage ticket 4720, Rooted, Miami. Rush fire trucks and ambulances to flight 217, runway 2. Advise crew and passengers to abandon flight 217 as soon as it is down. Control tower calling flight 217. Control tower calling flight 217. Flight 217 control. Emergency order. Turn back and make an immediate landing. A demolition truck will remove a bag containing a bomb from your luggage compartment. The bag is black leather. Claim check number 4720. Repeat. Claim check number 4720. Be right back. Attention, everyone. This is an emergency. All personnel is ordered off the runways and field. All others, please remain within administration building. I repeat, this is an emergency. What's going on? Come on, I know the manager. Let's find out. Alfredo, what's happened? That idiot smuggled a time bomb aboard a plane. Which plane? Flight 217. Flight 2... Pam. Boy, you... Hold it, Jerry. Hold it. If anything happens to Pam, or... <laughs> Let's get out there. for the taxi driver. <laughs> They must have given me the wrong suitcase. Dios mío, ¿quién explotó mi taxi? ¿Quién puso esa bomba en mi, co en mi coche? Oh, qué suerte. Oh, it's a tough break, amigo. Sí, porque yo era el taxi driver más rápido de todo México. <laughs> What's so funny? What's he saying? Maybe it isn't for mixed company, Jerry. Oh, no, Pam. This may surprise you, though. 
The driver is very happy. He's very proud. What? <laughs> yes, he says that for just one little moment, he owned the fastest moving taxi cab in all of Mexico City. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful! <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Lou Landers. Produced by John W. Loveton. A John W. Loveton production. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation.